In this video, we're going to be using the law of cosines in a different way. We're going to use it to find the measure of an angle if we're given three side lengths in a triangle. As before, that means we're going to be given three different side lengths, three different letters, I'm sorry. The law of cosines, the keynote for it, for you using the law of cosines is that you're given three different letters. In the previous example, you were given an angle and the two sides that touch it. In this one we're going to be given the three side lengths. We're going to be using, however, the same formula that we had before, where c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of angle c. And what we'd like to do now is just kind of rewrite this somehow so that this cosine of angle c is by itself isolated on one side of the equation. So what we're going to do, and there's many different ways we could do this, is I'm going to take c squared and I'm going to move a squared over. I'm going to subtract it from both sides to cancel it out here. And then on the other side I have negative 2. The negative remains b times cosine of angle c. And again, we're just rewriting this formula. Now I'm going to change the sign of everything on both sides. So the a squared becomes positive because it's negative. The negative b squared becomes positive, And the positive c squared becomes negative. So I'm just changing the sign of everything on this side. And because I'm doing that, I have to do the same here. So negative 2 times all of this becomes positive 2. And since, again, I'm trying to get this by itself, my next step is going to be dividing both sides by 2 times a times b, which cancels this out. And now I have, and I'll just rewrite this this way, the cosine of angle c is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared, all divided by 2 times a times b. Now just for convenience sake, I'm going to rewrite this two more times where the cosine of angle C becomes the cosine of angle A, the cosine of angle C becomes the cosine of angle B. Um, just because there is a little bit of a pattern there that I think is helpful for people to see. So again, we have the cosine of angle C equals A squared plus B squared minus C squared, all divided by 2 times A times B. Let's look at how it would look for the cosine of angle A. For angle A, we'd have b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2 times b times c. And if we were trying to find angle B, given these same three side lengths, we would have a squared plus c squared minus b squared over 2 times a times c. It would take a while for me to rewrite these one at a time. And so let's just look at this general pattern, perhaps, would be helpful. If we're trying to find angle C, we're, we're adding A squared and B squared and subtracting the C squared. And also, since A and B are being added, A and B are being multiplied in the denominator. If we're trying to find angle A, we're adding B squared and C squared we're subtracting a squared. So you're going to start seeing the connection between the angle and, and where the side length ends up in this formula. b and c are being added here, so they're present as um, factors in the, in the denominator. Since we're trying to find angle b here, a squared is added to c squared, and b squared is what's subtracted 2 times a times c. So you can start to see a little bit of a pattern here. I would like to give you just a really quick example of this on the next page, just using this to find one angle measurement. Let's say we have uh, a triangle where one of the sides is 2, one of the sides is 5, definitely not drawn to scale, and the third side length is 6. And let's say we're trying to find angle A. It's going to be the smallest angle. This is side A. I, and in terms of labeling these B and C, it really doesn't matter which one. Okay. And now we're going to get the cosine of angle A is equal to 
Let's say b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2 times b times c. b squared is 25, c squared is 36, minus 2 squared, which is 4, all over 2 times 5 times 6. Now that's what the cosine of angle C, I'm sorry, angle A is going to be. Sorry. And what this is going to give us is a decimal number. So let's just see what happens here. 25 plus 36 minus 4 gives us 57. So what we like to do is simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and now we're going to turn this into a decimal number. So 57 divided by 60 gives us 0.95. And what we have so far is that the cosine of angle A is equal to this. If we look up angle A in a table, it should be opposite a cosine value of 0.95. So to find angle A, we're going to take the cosine negative 1, or arc cosine of 95 hundredths, and that gives us 18 point two degrees. Again, this is just a very quick example of using this. In the next example, in the next video, I'm going to give you a chance to do all three angles in a triangle.